If you're watching this video on the day it comes out, then The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is less than 12 hours from being released. If you happen to live in a time zone that is at least 12 hours ahead of mine, or are watching this on literally any day besides the one that I posted it on though, what are you doing here? Why aren't you playing Tears of the Kingdom? Is it is it because you didn't want to shell out $70 and normalize that as a standard price for AAA games from now on? Fair. Now, unfortunately, I have not been able to play the game yet because, you know, time is a thing. So, no need to worry about spoilers here. I am flying just as blind as all of you. And speaking of flying... There was a really weird rumor going around on social media a while ago that this game was going to end on the moon. I have no idea what their evidence was or where that idea even came from, but a lot of people were really convinced that they'd be going into orbit. Now, again, I have not played the game at this point, but based on the trailers and gameplay that I have seen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it doesn't seem like your journey is going to end in space but mine will. You see, in a little gameplay featurette with Zelda series producer Eiji Awanuma, they showed off this game's new equivalent to the runes from Breath of the Wild. They seem interesting enough, from letting you climb mountains super fast if you can get under them, to sticking weapons together, to, uh, oh yeah, Legos. Sold. In the video, we see Aonuma take a couple of logs and some fans, stick them together, and create a fully functional boat in the span of like a minute, and then sail away on it. And when I saw this, oh, 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 it got the old gears in my head turning, and they haven't stopped. Sure, a boat is pretty cool, and in other trailers we see a car, a hot air balloon, and one of those things from Cats, but surely we can do even better. Make something even more grand. An even bigger middle finger to the gods and all those who said we can't. It seems like this building system is robust enough that the only real limit is your imagination. So for someone like me, there is no limit. Aonuma, you show me this and expect me to care for a single second about what's going on with Zelda and Hot Ganondorf? You expect me to not kick whatever expansive world you've made to the curb and build a rocket that will take me straight to the moon? Well, that's just not correct. Okay, so obviously as I'm recording this, the game isn't out yet, so I can't go in and show you how to build a rocket. But what I can do is lay down a challenge. I can't build a rocket for you, but I can give you all the tools you'll need to make one yourself and meet me among the stars. So buckle up everyone and prepare for liftoff because this is quite literally rocket science. Richard, hit that intro. Now, clearly, literal rocket science is a pretty complicated topic. It's the de facto benchmark for difficult thing for a reason. It took humanity centuries to figure out how to leave our terrestrial prison. People have devoted their entire lives trying to understand the science required to swim among the cosmos. As statistics say, I got about 15 minutes before most of you peace out and go watch Tetrabit Gaming instead. No, no, seriously. Statistically speaking, most of you won't make it to the end of this video. That's fine. It just means most of you are basic. But go ahead. Prove me wrong. You won't. Thankfully, though, this is a video game. So, like, 99% of the stuff that real rocket scientists have to deal with, we can just completely ignore. No, the real hard part is going to be making a video about rocket science funny. Because, like, look. I like math as much as the next, probably considerably more than the next guy actually, but trying to do research for this video, it's a bit much. What the hell is this? Luckily, unless the reason Tears of the Kingdom took so long was because they were programming in highly accurate fluid mechanics and the laws of aerodynamics into their physics engine, we really only need to understand one thing in order to avenge your childhood and crash into that dang moon yourself. And that 
is a little something called thrust. To grossly oversimplify, a rocket, or the booster part of it at least, is essentially just a sealed cylinder with a hole in the bottom filled with super flammable rocket fuel. When you light the stuff up, it releases a bunch of carbon dioxide, water vapor, and a lot of other stuff, basically like a really strong version of what comes out of the tailpipe of your car. Because there's only one way for all that stuff to escape the booster, it's all forced out the bottom at high speeds. Isaac Newton, you know, the guy with the apples and the figs? Yeah, he figured out that every action has an equal but opposite reaction, which basically means that all the stuff being forced out the bottom pushes back up on the body of the rocket on its way out. That upward force is what we call thrust. If I lost you already, to put it simply, uh, you remember that time that you filled that Coke bottle with Mentos and turned it upside down and it went shooting off and hit your friend Brian in the chin and he cracked his left front tooth? Remember that? Sean, he started crying and you and your buddy Riley were freaking out because your mom explicitly told you not to drink her Coke. Uh, I mean, you didn't technically drink it, but surely she wouldn't be happy with this on her birthday of all days. Yeah, that's thrust. I realize most of you are like, what is he talking about? But I, I, I pray that there is one dude named Sean out there who is just losing his mind right now. Oh yeah, so in order to go up, all you need to do is generate some thrust. <laughs> Sounds easy enough, but unfortunately, thrust isn't the only force acting on our rocket. We also have to contend with gravity. The force of gravity is equal to the mass of an object times 32.2 if you live in America, 9.8 if you live pretty much anywhere else and are super snobby about the metric system, or 10 if you're an engineer and you're feeling lazy. So basically, just if you're an engineer. No, no, just if you're me. If you take the force of thrust and subtract the force of gravity, you get the net force. Net basically just means total. I don't know why scientists can't just say total, I guess two syllables was too much. If your thrust is greater than the force of gravity, then this number is gonna be positive and your rocket is gonna go up. And the bigger the difference, the faster your rocket's gonna go. Hooray, we did it. Except there's still one problem. Space, if you couldn't tell, is pretty far away, so your rocket needs to fly a decently long time before you can get all the way up there, and fuel burns pretty quickly. So you gotta make sure you pack enough fuel for the trip. However, fuel is also kinda heavy, so adding more of it to your rocket will increase the mass that you need to lift. This means that the force of gravity pushing you downwards is stronger, which means that you'll need more thrust to overcome it, which means that you'll need more fuel, which means you'll add even more mass, and you can see how this can get kinda complicated pretty quickly. Basically, your goal is to find the sweet spot of having just enough fuel to get you up into space without adding too much weight. But that requires a lot of math, and statistically half of you are already gone and the rest are dropping like flies, so let's skip all that and figure out how any of this helps us with Zelda. Now, I'm gonna make a bold prediction here and say that Aonuma probably won't be leaving hydrogen, methane, and kerosene lying around Hyrule for you to craft some rocket fuel, but there still are a few ways we could go about generating thrust. Like bombs! It seems like Link may have lost his Sheikah slate in between the couch cushions of Hyrule Castle since the last game. Hey, we've all been there, man. <laughs> I know you have, Sean, remember? Remember when you lost your iPhone S in between the couch cushions at Riley's house and they found it six years later when moving and now it's worth a ton of money because it still has the original Flappy Bird on it? Classic, Sean, I hope. Anyway, without the Sheikah Slate, we won't have access to our infinite supply of remote bombs like in Breath of the Wild. But if you manage to track down enough of those explosive red barrels that the Bokoblins have lying around for no apparent reason, then we might be in business. These aren't ideal since they go off in one single explosive burst as opposed to rocket fuel, which has a more consistent burn, but I think we can still make it work. Obviously, again, I haven't been able to get my hands on the building system in this game myself. All I've seen is that little boat, so I don't know what sort of limitations we're gonna have to work with here. So this is a rough idea of one 
possible rocket design, you may have to tweak it a bit or a lot to actually make it work in game. But don't worry, I have faith in you. <laughs> You've made it 10 minutes into a YouTube video after all. That is a Herculean task in the age of TikToks and shorts. If you could do that, you could do anything. All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is track down a large, round, hollow cylinder for the body of your rocket. Circles have the lowest area to perimeter ratio, so you'll be able to pack the most stuff in here while keeping your weight as low as possible. If those don't exist, you can always make do with a square or a triangle. It's not a huge deal. Also, make sure it's not made from a material that can burn or blow up, or else your rocket will burn and blow up. I mean, this is still technically literally rocket science, but I feel like you probably figured that one out yourself. Okay, so we have the body of our rocket assembled. If you stick a bunch of explosive barrels to the bottom rim of the body, place something over them to cover them up, and find a way to detonate them without killing yourself, you should be shot up into the air. Make sure you do this on a perfectly flat piece of ground though, or else you'll probably go shooting off to the side and definitely die. Normal rockets can get around this by adding fins to the side, which can generate something called lift as the rocket flies to keep it straight, but again, this is a video game, so that probably won't work. Just try and eyeball it, I guess. Assuming you found a way to rig this up, and you and or the body of the rocket doesn't immediately explode, or I guess just and in this case, you should find that you've been propelled up into the sky. And if all goes well, soon enough you'll find yourself plummeting back down to Earth because one blast is almost certainly not enough to send you into orbit. So how do we overcome this problem? Well, just do it again. Build a second one of these modules on top of the first and rig it in such a way that you can detonate them individually. This might be a bit tricky. I don't know if they have like fuses or something in the game, but it's the internet. I'm sure you'll figure it out. This second layer can probably be a bit smaller than the first because you're not carrying the weight of the first set of barrels anymore. The real trick here would be to figure out a way to fully detach the first module after the barrels in it have exploded so you don't have to carry that weight anymore. Kind of like how real rockets drop their boosters when they don't need them. Hopefully you can just, I don't know, unstick the parts with your magic arm or whatever and let it fall away, but again we'll have to wait and see. From here, you can basically just keep stacking these sections one on top of the other. Explode the bottom one, drop that section off the body, wait till you've flown as high as you can, then explode the second one, drop that section off the body, and continue until the cold vacuum of space takes you. Oh yeah, you'll probably also want to build like a cabin or something so you don't suffocate and freeze to death in space. That's, that's, probably, that's probably pretty important. You definitely don't want to do that. The, the freezing part, that is not good. I have no idea how many blasts you would need to get all the way up, and there also might be better, more optimized configurations than this simple stack design. I'll need to get my hands on the game and experiment some more to be sure. Like I said in the beginning, this video is meant to be more of a jumping off point. A launch pad, if you will. <laughs> Look at me. Who said science could be fun? It's got puns! Sometimes, I mean, not, it usually does not have puns, but sometimes. Hopefully this video has sparked some creativity in you and given you the inspiration to take on this challenge with me. If you do decide to join me in this super dumb quest, then please save some videos of your attempts, successful or not, and send them to me on Twitter. I'll have a link in the description below, but it's just at the chip tide, just like my YouTube channel name. I honestly barely use Twitter ever at this point, but if my timeline were filled with a bunch of people trying to make rockets and other cool stuff in Zelda, that would bring me back for sure. There may also be better ways of achieving thrust than these barrels. We know you can use balloons or fans, for example, but I mean, come on, which one sounds more fun? Quite literally blasting off like Team Rocket or flipping a fan over and slowly riding it up. I know which one I'm choosing, and I think, considering the fact that you are one of the brave few to make it to the very end of the video, you do too. And also, if you're still watching and having a good time, then maybe hit that subscribe button. I'd like to say that it'll notify you when I post a new video, but I honestly don't know if that's true. It may very well do literally nothing for you, but it's free and it helps out small channels like this a ton in the algorithm, which means I can keep making videos like this every week. But with that, we're probably about 18 minutes closer to the release of Tears of the Kingdom than when you started, so I'll let you get back to dodging those spoilers, and I'll see you in the stars. Oh, and uh, Sean? 
happy birthday, man.